Welcome in, everybody, to our University of West Florida Spring Football Special. I'm your host, Will Kennedy, joined by UWF head coach Pete Shinnick, and we're ready to talk some football because it feels like <laughs> it's been too long. We've done little bits and pieces along the way, but we're looking at the fall of 2021 and playing some football games again. It's been a long journey, Coach. It really has. I mean, and I give our players just a tremendous amount of credit fighting through the fall uh, of 20. Obviously, that season was taken from us. Uh, I really... Uh, appreciate how our players have handled it, really showed up with a great attitude. And uh, this spring has been an exciting spring for us. We've been able to accomplish a lot and get a lot done. So uh, excited about what we've been able to do and uh, still got a few things to get done before we finish here. For the fans out there, it's a little different than the normal spring in the fact that more chances to practice, more chances to scrimmage and, and some outside competition as well. Correct. We really are under a fall type schedule with our players. Uh, we get more time during the week with them. We get more opportunities to engage with them. Uh, we've tried to keep that fresh as one of the things that we're, we're working on in 2021. Uh, and our guys have handled it really well. But you mentioned, you know, outside competition. We got a scrimmage against Albany State, which went uh, really well. Great to go against someone other than yourself. Uh, there and then uh, last weekend got the opportunity to go against FAMU so really couldn't have scripted a better spring for us under the circumstances. Last time we saw you guys on a field it was in McKinney, Texas. You're winning the 2019 Division II NCAA National Championship so you're still the reigning champs because no season was played. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see kind of how the team reacts to being the top dog a little you know the, having the bullseye on the back and kind of how your opponents look at that. Let's talk about defense first as we kind of go through the spring and look forward to, to the fall. You have added some talent on the defensive side of the football, and I hear a lot of talk between your players that yeah, the defense may be better than the offense or as good as the offense, and that's a good thing. Well, I think our <laughs> defensive players would say that definitely, uh, and I think they say that every I day. Did. Yeah, so which is good. We, we, we want that. Uh, and I think the additions have really been uh, guys that fit our system, understand what we're trying to get accomplished and then really adding to it. And, you know, I know we're going to hear from Shea here, Campbell. He's been a great addition, really kind of taking over the quarterback spot of the defense. Uh, he's got, um, you know, a lot of experience and he just brings a leadership quality that, you know, you knew it the first couple of days he was uh, in the huddle and uh, on the field and just talking to guys. And then we got out on the field and it just took over. So excited about what he's added, but then, uh, you know, Matt Gotell at the defensive lines come on extremely well. Trent Archie's been with us really from the beginning uh, and played extremely well. And I know we're going to hear from D Bell as well. Uh, just those four guys really have done a fantastic job taking this defense, rising it uh, to the level that we feel can be as good as any in the country. Let's hear from some of those very confident Argo <laughs> defenders. Just excited to get back on the field, you know, put my hand in the dirt, put my hands on somebody different, you know. It's, we've been practicing so much against each other. It's good to get a difference, go against FAMU and Albany State and all those guys. So it's been a blessing. It's been really good because we got a lot more time to connect with the team. A lot more players get to get to bond as one and get to know the defense better on my end and know the offense better on other people's end. So I think the spring went very well for us. It's been de de definitely different for me. Um, you know, I am new here, so it's a little bit of a culture shock to me considering how they do things is a little bit differently than when I was at West Virginia, but uh, I've adapted well. I think they have a very good structure. I think everything's run very, you know, top notch. I think it's that's why I'm here. How good? I mean, we're already great to be real with you. I mean, there's definitely a lot we got to go through and like more we have to learn, but on all three levels, I really feel like we're stacked. You know, it was. It's going to be a good year. That's best all I can say. It's a different defense, but it all comes together. So we got a lot of pieces that all connect to what we already had here. So we brought in a lot of guys that just connected and bond well with everybody. At the end of the day, I just want to win. You know, whether the offense can slang it the way they were doing it last year, or if we can get turnovers and picks and score on defense, or whatever it takes to win, really. But, I mean, I like defense. If we can be a defensive team, that's awesome. Offensive team, awesome. 50-50, even better. You know, let's do it like that. When we go against them in practice, I feel like it's every day's a game. You got to show up, show out, you know, or you're going to look looking silly on Saturdays. And that's just a good thing about our offense. They're just so great in every aspect. Coach, as you mentioned, they're a confident group, and really I think the benefit is, and you heard them say that, is they get to go against an offense that's fantastic with tons of talent and vice versa, and that's only good for the team. Well, it is, and I think the, the thing that uh, our defense has made our offense better, uh, and our offense has made our defense better, and we want to continue that. And, you know, one of the things we started here was, you know, we, we said in the beginning that our best was good enough to beat anybody. We've got to be at our best. If we're not, we're going to get beat, and obviously we've been beat 
But as this has grown and we have added parts and parts have developed and guys have gotten better through the course of time being with us, uh, you know, we really feel the competition we have during the week is as good as any competition we're going to get on the weekends. All right, we're going to dive into that offense next. They're putting up points like it was going out of style last time we saw them on the field, and hopefully they're looking for that to continue. We'll preview the offense next here on the UWF Spring Football Special. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Penn Air Federal Credit Union, Jenny King, Hill Kelly Dodge, High Point Hotel Group, and the Florida Lottery. Welcome back into our University of West Florida Spring Football Special. Excited about the prospects of playing in 2021. We're going to talk about the schedule a little bit later here in the program, but it's time to talk about the offense. We started with the defense because, you know, alphabetically, right? D and then O comes next. <laughs> but uh, in many ways, this offense you would think with the talent that you guys lost, especially at wide receiver and losing uh, some dynamic offensive linemen and guys that were all conference, all American type sure. guys, you know, that maybe, maybe it notches down a little bit. Maybe you miss a beat. But from what I've seen in the spring, you guys are, are hitting on all cylinders and look like you picked right up where you left off. Well, and, and a credit to the older guys, uh, you know, in the system and Rodney Coates and Karan Ashley. I mean, two older guys that have just really stepped up into that role. We lost you know, 1,200 yards of uh, receiving in one guy, 1,200 yards from another guy, you know. That's uh, a lot. But it is. And and so to be able to to be able to replace that with those two seniors uh, is huge. And, you know, Larry Rembert stepped in very well. David Durden has stepped in very well. So we're excited. Kenneth Chanel's uh, situation at wide receiver has grown. And, um, you know, we're really excited about the group of receivers that we have uh, and with that, Austin Reed, I think, finds ways to uh, get the ball to people at the right time. And, uh, you know, we saw that really the last half of the season. I think he was as good a quarterback as there was in Division II the last half of the season. His stats show that. Uh, he picked that up last fall. He's continued that this spring. And, uh, you know, we're, we're excited about the direction that this offense is headed. The kid works hard from, from what <laughs> I've said. And he likes football an awful lot, which is a good thing. Let's dive in and talk to some of your offensive experienced players about what they've gotten out of this spring and what they're expecting for the fall. You know, we've really just been working out all fall, you know, got, a, got like 15 practices in in the fall. And then this spring we've been able to just go full out, you know, practicing four times a week, getting two, three lifts in a week and just getting ready, you know, and then personally just getting ready with my mechanics and working with my quarterback coach and just you know, just getting ready for us fall of 2021. It hasn't been the traditional spring. Um, we've been allotted a lot more time and stuff like that. So uh, we've been making do with the time, the extra time that we have, getting extra reps, uh, mental reps, physical reps, and all that good stuff like that. So uh, we've just been making the most of it, getting our football IQ up and all that good stuff. Fall was more like uh, getting to know everyone, getting gelled up and everything. And then I think spring, we really got to hone our like skills as a unit. and just really get after it, working together, because we kind of had a more solidified line in the spring than we did in the fall. So it was really good to just to have that time to get this figured out. The running back room has definitely um, increased. Um, the receiver room has definitely increased. 
Uh, Austin has gotten better. Um, the line is doing an excellent job. So uh, we've definitely added uh, the, the coaching staff. Is everything is just coming together to be better than last year. One area that we didn't touch on, kind of leading into them, that they seem all very excited about is that running back room. Mm -hmm. You've got a, you've got some depth at running back, and it's going to be competition just to get on that roster for the game. It is, and, and really for the first time, I think we've got a, a wide variety of running backs that can do uh, multiple things. And you know, we saw what Shamari Mason could do last year as a first-team All-Conference freshman. Uh, Javon Newton had a very good year for us. Anthony Johnson is close to being the all-time leading rusher uh, in the history of the school, as well as the all-time touchdown, uh, you know, uh, rushing touchdown leader. Uh, we've added a couple of guys uh, that bring some speed and versatility. So we're, we're excited about that. And then a guy we redshirted uh, last year, we were close to playing him. Seth Johnson has stepped up as well. So. Uh, you saw it in the FAMU scrimmage that, you know, we have multiple guys just be able to make plays, and that's exciting. You put that along with the offensive line that's growing and developing. We know the receiver room, the tight end room is very good as well. Uh, we, we, we feel like across the board we're a very balanced offense. And for those that are wondering, Shamari Mason really worked his tail off to get that knee rehabilitated and be back there. So dynamic presence in your mm -hmm. offense to go with Austin Reed and all the receivers that we talked about. It's going to be a show, right? We, we like to say a greatest show on turf kind of thing well, or grass or whatever we're playing on that. Whatever way. whatever we're playing on, we, we want to be great. So. Not just new faces in you know on the field and playing for you. You've got some new coaches in the mix. Joining the 2019 Division II National Champs, we'll meet some of those new faces coming up next on the UWF Spring Football Special. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people with a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida, no limits. Whataburger now delivers, which means you can get your favorites delivered to your door. And this favorite delivered to your door. And this one. And this one. Simple as that. Whataburger delivery is here. Use our app or order at whataburger.com. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into the UWF Spring Football Special. I'm Will Kennedy, joined by head coach Pete Shinnick here at the University of West Florida. The defending national champs, things are rolling well, but football is a game of change. Mm -hmm. Players come and go, as do coaches. And you've, yep. you've had some, some guys leave the staff for, for good reasons in many cases, and then you've brought in some new faces as well. Caleb Noble's no longer around. He got a great opportunity. Caleb, very excited for him. I mean, as a young <laughs> coach, getting that opportunity to go to Clemson. Uh, you know, fun conversation. Dabo Sweeney calls up and says, hey, I want to hire Caleb Noble. So I'm like, okay, sounds good, coach. <laughs> Uh, happy for Caleb, that, that's a great opportunity. But to be able to replace uh, Caleb with somebody I've known for a very long time. I've known him since he was 18 years old, recruited him to Azusa Pacific. Uh, Rudy Carlton, uh, he's come in, we haven't missed a beat, and really stepped in and just added his wealth of knowledge and experience to the position. And you bring in a guy to coach wide receivers who has got a ton of experience as well. You guys have some connections going back. Well, yeah, to get to get Ron Dickerson Jr., we, we feel blessed. We really do. I mean, uh, I've known Ron Jr. His dad was our DB coach at Colorado. So when I was 18 years old, met Coach Dickerson Sr. Uh, Ron was, a, you know, a, a kid running around and then uh, just have watched him develop. Uh, he was actually a freshman at the University of Arkansas when I was there. So have watched his career grow, you know, head coach at FCS, coached in the SEC. Uh, we're thrilled to death to have Coach Dickerson Jr. here because he's been a great addition already and uh, instant impact to what we're trying to do. Well, we wanted Argo Nation to get a chance to meet those two guys that have joined the staff, so we had a chance to sit down with both of them. 
it's been wonderful. You know, um, the expectations of what I thought the program was going to be, what Coach Shinnick told me and my family are right on point. And um, it's a very unique situation. You know, it's a family driven situation. The city is almost the same in the way that they support, you know, the University of West Florida. It's kind of always been uh, our dream to coach football and be by the beach. And um, obviously the West Coast is a lot different than here. Obviously the, you know, the program and the level of football. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been exciting. It's been cool to see just the different culture. And, you know, you see a lot of the influence of the South here. You have to, you know, bring your game up to that level and, and you want to keep it there. You add yours in, you add your flavor in every once in a while. But the greatest thing is, is that the program is on track to where it needs to be. And you just add your two cents in and keep on going. Obviously, I know Coach Shinnick. He and I have remained close over the years. And I knew culturally it'd be the, you know, the same thing that I was used to and the same thing I believe in. Uh, but from the second I stepped on campus, I felt like there was just excellence from top to bottom. I think right now uh, I have about 18 guys in my room and uh, there's a lot of talent in that room. And the thing about it is, is I, you know, when I came in, I told them the slate's going to be clean, set the bar to be an All-American, and everybody else step up to that. Everybody in the room's humble. They coach each other. You know, they've embraced my coaching. But I'm excited to see, you know, the talent when the real lights come on. Coach, both, you know, as you mentioned, both vastly experienced coaches to bring in. You know, what an asset to bring into the staff. There have been a few other changes as well. There have been, you know, and, and we talked a little bit back in the fall. You know, Joe Wintrick is now coaching our tight ends. Uh, Andre Duncombe's coaching our corners. Uh, and then Matt Mendez got a high school offensive coordinator job. So Kosad Lewis came in, uh, and he's now coaching our running backs. Throw that along with Jordan Remza and uh, Kyle Hoffman, who've been with us. We feel like we got a great young coaching staff to go along with the guys we just mentioned. You mentioned Coach Q, a lot of energy. I saw that <laughs> over at Florida and everything. Coach, this. Coach Q <laughs> brings some good life to the program. It's been fun. Well, you mentioned the two players in Andre Duncombe and Joe Wintrick who have joined the staff as GAs. Now we'll have a chance to talk to them a little bit next on the UWF Spring Football Special. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Coca-Cola, Baptist Healthcare and the Andrews Institute, Publix, Whataburger, and CPC Office Technologies. Coach, as we mentioned earlier here on the UWF Spring Football Special, the last time we saw you guys on the field, a long time ago now. It seems like <laughs> you know years and years. It does. That was in McKinney, Texas, winning the Division II National Championship. Really you know, had, didn't have the opportunity to play in the fall. Did a ring ceremony back mm -hmm. in October, which was very special. I know a chance yep. to bring back some guys who had graduated and moved on recently from the program, plus the current players. You've been able to keep a couple guys around that I know are important to the program and have now become GA. Yeah, so to have Joe and uh, Joe Wintrick and Andre Duncombe stick around, uh, really, and Andre being one of the original members of that 2015 class, uh, to just keep the culture, uh, keep you know driving who we are, how we do it, why we do it, uh, and then uh, obviously a little bit of the flavor of the history as well. We're, we're standing in the Daryl Gooden Center. The locker room is one of the best in the country at our level. Uh, it hasn't always been like that. Uh, and those guys kind of remind them, hey, look, we've come a long way. We appreciate what we have. Uh, our university's done a great job supporting us. So uh, thrilled to death that they're with us. They're doing a great job. Both those guys are going to be very good coaches. Uh, and they already are establishing you know, their reputation as a young coach right now. And they're both extremely camera shy. 
<laughs> yeah, neither one of them want to talk at all. Yeah, yeah as no you'll doubt. see right here. <laughs> want me to take the lead since off the line and get no love anyway? Wilson, I'm used to being in front of the camera. <laughs> you know, we know the program, we know how it rolls. Uh, we know how practice goes, we know what's expected. So it's actually been very smooth, you know, transitioning from a player to coach. I would say the biggest, uh, you know, adjustment is probably just the, the eyes of the players, uh, you know, watching you, you know, how you act as a coach. Me and Joe both had a lot of respect of the guys as players. So when we transferred to coaches, it was like, whatever, you know, we, we try to keep guys accountable. We are, we are tape plus and everything. So it was, it was a smooth transition. We still crack jokes and have fun and practice and we still turn up. It's just, it's a different type of mantra now. The eyes of a coach are definitely different. You know, you see, you see more into stuff. Uh, you see more into the reasons why, how we do stuff and why we do stuff. You know, as a player, you're like, oh man, we gotta go out here and do that right now, really. But as a coach, you're like, man, we gotta get it done. Like, this, this is the time to shine right here. Like, we got 30 minutes, we gotta, we gotta get this done, you know, ASAP. As a player, it's more about the results. Like, coach, I made the tackle. Coach, I made the play. As a coach, it's more as the process now. I was used to working hard as a player, um, you know, but there's just a lot of little things, you know, that come with being a GA, you know. We're here to make the full-time guys' uh, lives easier, you know, all while we're still coaching a position ourselves. I crack jokes with the players like, oh, uh, y'all think it's hard just getting up here and then coming to meetings and then going back home? <laughs> Imagine if you was getting up here, coming to meetings, going to another meeting, and then going to a meeting after that, and then going home. And then guys be laughing like, I was like, it's a different, it's a different life when you're a coach compared to when you're a player. It's a blessing to keep those kind of guys around, as you mentioned, and have the opportunity to have them interact with the next generation. Teach yeah. them the, the Argo way. Yeah, really. And that's what we've tried to do. And I mean, I think we bring in a great group every year. We want to develop that. Anybody that we add to that, you know, I mentioned Shea earlier and Matt Gotell, D. Bell, those guys that have transferred in over the course of the last couple of years. They embrace this culture. They embrace how we do things. They understand our ate, excellence in all that we do, living up to their fullest potential. To have Joe and Andre just drive that culture and keep that moving uh, obviously helps us get done what we want to do. Coming up next, we wanted to mic up one of your assistant coaches. And we figured, you know, Darian Dooling, your defensive coordinator, was the guy. And then we realized how much he runs around during practice and, and thought that might have been a mistake. But we had a good time doing it. So that's next here on the UWF Spring Football Special. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose. A shared vision. And a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. The Florida Lottery is proud to support education by contributing billions of dollars to Florida schools and awarding countless Bright Future scholarships so Florida students can do more than just dream of a brighter future. They can create one. Learn more at FLALottery.com. Realm Apartments is a proud sponsor of the Argonauts. Realm is opening less than a mile from campus and is now leasing brand new apartments and townhouses for a fall 2021 opening. These apartments come fully furnished, and rates include water, sewer, cable, Wi-Fi, and trash. Check out realmlife.com for more information. Go Argos! For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind, and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back in here to the UWF Spring Football Special, joined by head coach Pete Shinnick at the University of West Florida. You've got a great coaching staff. We've touched on them. We've talked to a couple of them. Darian Doolin, your defensive coordinator, he's energetic. He has a lot of energy going during <laughs> scrimmages and practices and games. No, he does, and really, what you what you what you saw in that scrimmage is what we see every day in practice. Uh, anytime there's a competitive aspect to something, 
Uh, Coach Dew is just like that. And it's he's been, again, a, another great addition that I feel very fortunate that we have uh, on our staff. I mean, he's brought in so many great concepts to our defense, enhanced us. Uh, and, you know, that energy right there is contagious. Our players see it. Our coaches see it. it, it it's a lot of fun. The man never stops working. As vocal as they get, we mic'd him up during the spring scrimmage. This is what we got. <laughs> blue bandits, blue bandits, blue bandits. Blue bandits. Return. Blue bandits. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's tighten up, let's tighten up, let's tighten up. Ah, uh, uh, we missed it. Uh, yep. Go! Go, Ja'Curry! Ja'Curry's gotta go. Yeah, field. Mike, field, Pyre. Field, Willie. Sack, 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 sack. Hey, get out of there, you all drop. Good job, good job, good job, good job. let's go. Bandit, 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 bandit. Oh, right there. He's there, he's there, he's there, he's there. He's, he's there right here, he's there right here. He's there right here. Dronte, bump out. Dronte, but no, Dronte. 514, phone, Mike Field A. Hit it, Mike, hit it, Mike, hit it, Mike. Ah, he fell down. Fred. Tight, patchy, screen, real. We had him in there, we just missed the tackle. And I don't know if the basher got through the B gap or got pinned. Always fun to talk to Coach Dew and especially to watch him work. You guys are, you know, getting ready to wrap up spring here, take it on into the summer. I know you've got, you'll have guys staying around, working out in groups together, you know, getting bigger, faster, stronger, sure. all those kind of things. Targeting towards the fall. And of course, there's a lot of unknowns still floating around in the world, but we do have a schedule out for 2021. Let's talk a little bit about that schedule opening on the road against an FCS over at right. McNeese State. Yeah, and when we scheduled that, obviously that was going to be year six, uh, and we felt like we would be in a position where we were an established Division II program. It was the right time to take on an FCS program. Obviously, we didn't get year five. Uh, but we still feel like we're in a very good place to do that. And we got a tremendous amount of respect for McNeese. They're playing right now, so they're, they're going to get five, six games under their belt. If they win, they could go to the playoffs. Uh, so we know it's going to be a great challenge. And then from there, really, uh, I think with Texas A&M Commerce, who's going to be a top five program in the country, uh, the always tough Gulf South Conference, um, you know, there's probably going to be three teams from our league in the top 20. We really, with an FCS and Commerce, I mean, we, we got five teams that, uh, you know, could make the playoffs at some sort, at some level, uh, you know, on our schedule. Valdosta will come in, I think, to wrap mm -hmm. everything up. So you're going to yep. see the, the three defending champs or the last three champions all, you know, play. You, you guys will have a chance to line up and play two of them. And, of course, oh, yeah. being, being one of them as well. So great schedule. And, of course, GoArgos.com is the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the schedule release on there for you. Yep. And more information will be coming as far as game times and ticketing information and all that. Well, Coach, we appreciate you spending some time with us. It's been fun to watch this journey through the spring. And I know I speak for Argo Nation when I say we are so looking forward <laughs> to getting back on the field in the fall. No, we are too. We appreciate all the support we've got and uh, looking forward to a great fall of uh, 2021. We will see you in the fall, as Coach mentioned as well, for the Coach Shinnick Show. We thank you for watching and go Argos.